Um, let's start with the next talk of the session, which is um, by Antonio, who's going to be talking about noise-induced cello circuits and absence of barren plateaus. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name uh, is Antonio, and today I'm going to talk about uh, noise-induced shallow circuits and the absence of barren plateau. And uh, this is uh, a joint work uh, with these great people, Armando, Shumik, Gosh, Armando Grisani, Shumik, Gosh, Sumit Katri, Jan Seisert, Daniel Silfranca, and Yu Yi Hui Kwek. And uh, after the talk, uh, if you want to have an additional chat, uh, feel free to reach uh, both me and also Daniel, who is uh, here in the audience. And uh, um, it was a really crucial contributor to this uh, work that I'm going to present. Okay, let's start with a spoiler of what we will see. We will show that uh, if we have uh, a circuit architecture where this is uh, represent uh, the noise in a quantum circuit, for most of the realization of this circuit, only the last few layers will matter to estimate observable expectation values. And uh, this will imply efficient classical simulation and lack of barren plateau for a realistic noise model. And we'll see in precise terms what uh, this means. Okay. The line of my talk is to start with the introduction of noise in quantum circuits, then move to this effective shallowness of quantum, noisy quantum circuits, and then uh, classical simulation of Pauli expectation values on noisy random circuits, and then move to the barren plateau. Okay. Uh, understanding noise, the impact of noise in current quantum devices is crucial for harnessing the capabilities and the limitation of uh, this noisy device. And uh, many previous works modeled the noise as solely depolarizing. Uh, and this is the definition. Uh, the, a depolarizing noise and uh, uh, any sta a state in a convex combination between uh, the state itself and the maximum state. And uh, it has been shown that depolarizing noise induces uh, catastrophic phenomena in quantum uh, computing. Uh, for example, in the near term, uh, bar uh, depolarizing noise induces uh, barren plateau in variation of quantum algorithms and also renders uh, random circuit sampling supremacy experiments efficiently classically simulable. However, it has been pointed out that uh, time departure from this model could lead to different conclusions. For example, in the context of uh, fault tolerance, error correction, and uh, also in the context of uh, random circuit sampling, where it was shown that uh, both uh, easiness and uh, hardness uh, um, arguments for um, like sim uh, circuit sampling do not hold anymore if the noise is different from depolarizing. Okay, and uh, the depolarizing noise assumption, if true, enormously constrains noisy computation. For example, let's say that we have a circuit like this, where the noise act at after uh, each layer, each two duplicates, and uh, we have the depth L that is larger, and we have the polarizing noise, and the depth is larger than log N. Uh, it can be proven that uh, we have uh, an exponential convergence in trace distance, so one norm, to the maximum state for any realization of these circuits. And uh, this L is the depth of the circuit. And this was shown in this uh, work by Müller Hermes, Daniel Silfranca, and uh, Michael Wolf. And, um, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, also before that, it was pointed out that uh, through this uh, convergent maximum state, only the quantum computation with no depolarizing noisy circuits is possible until log and depth. And um, for example, for the task of estimating public expectation value, this implies that uh, simulating public expectation value of deep depolarizing noisy circuit is trivial because uh, from this it follows that uh, this inequality that uh, for deep circuits for L large enough outputting zero will it's uh, it gives a very accurate appro approximation of your public expectation value and more generally for deep um, like this, uh, efficient classical simulation of, of all deep depolarizing noisy circuit is trivial because uh, in general also sampling is trivial because you can just sample from the maximum state uh, from the uniform distribution. And um, however, this kind of inequality uh, strongly relies on the assumption that this, the noise is depolarizing. And uh, uh, 
like uh, for noise different from the polarizing, not all circuits become trivial after log depth. After log depth, this quantity here is more than uh, inverse polynomial is small. And uh, if we have, for example, amplitude damping, this is not true anymore. And the real hardware noise is not solely the polarizing, which is a particular type of unital noise, where this is the definition of unital noise, that the noise fixed the identity matrix. And the other noise components, um, for example, T1 error amplitude damping are non unital which means that this uh, equation is not uh, true. And uh, strikingly, in this paper, quantum refrigerator, it was shown that uh, if uh, the noise is non neutral one can choose carefully the gates in the circuits to make these circuits fault tolerant without using fresh ancillary qubit during the computation. Like, um, okay. And um, so if the noise is non unital one can carefully engineer the circuit form reliable quantum computation also after log depth. While quantum computation with depolarizing noise is possible only until log depth. This is not true for non unital noise, as is shown in this paper. So if BPP different from BQP, public expectation value of worst case non unital noisy circuits cannot be efficiently estimated classically. So a question naturally arises, that is, what happens for generic noisy circuits? If I take an instance of these circuits where these two, these two qubit gates I sample uniformly are random, and I ask you, with high probability over the choice of the circuit, estimate this particular Pauli expectation value, um, can, can, you, can we solve this task efficiently? OK, our work address uh, this question, try to answer this question. And then we'll see. OK. What happens for generic noisy circuits where this noise uh, uh, we consider general kind of noise, any CPTP map, single qubit? OK. We show that only the last log n layers matter to estimate expectation value up to inverse polynomial accuracy for most circuits. And uh, the intuition behind this result is that uh, if nothing is clever is done to choose the, the gate to take advantage of the noise, um, the content of this part of the circuits is forgotten. And uh, this is uh, in, in contrast to the polarizing noise, where uh, deep, for deep circuits, no layers matter because you reach the maximum state. Even if you change uh, the gates, uh, this will not affect the result. And uh, this is all for all circuits. And we show that if the noise is non neutral instead, the, the last log n layer do matter, but for most circuits. And um, yeah, and this will not matter for most circuits. And uh, in more technical terms, we show this proposition that uh, for any initial state rod zero, possibly complex and observable O, this inequality holds, where this expected value should be read uh, like uh, with tight probability this inequality holds over the choice of the circuit. And um, this is the target expectation value where phi is the cir noisy circuit. And uh, here, uh, phi, this uh, quantity here represents the circuit truncated all, uh, where only the last k layers are considered. And uh, sigma zero, sorry, sigma zero is any preferred initial state. Uh, you, your fav you can put your favorite state like the zero state. And uh, the error approximation decays exponentially with the, the um, depth of your considered last layer. Okay, and uh, so if you want this error to be inverse polynomial is more k equal log n suffice to have any inverse polynomial accuracy. Okay, and this follows from the more general theorem that is um, we show that uh, uh, for any k depth circuit by k states rho and sigma Pauli p we have this inequality where the error decays exponentially both in the Pauli weight and this uh, depth k. And this, uh, from uh, uh, standard norm inequalities, implies uh, a trace distance convergence. But if we have uh, the depth of the circuits larger than n, omega n, and for any states rho and sigma, over which we apply the same noisy random circuits, the, um, this, uh, we have an exp uh, exponential decay of uh, this trace distance. And uh, this omega n probably is loose and uh, might, might be improved probably with the more sophisticated techniques 
probably to log n. And um, one can wonder if a result like this might be shown without this expected value. Uh, but um, one can cook up um, easily some counterexample, for example, choosing the phasing noise and classical circuits like topo gate and some classical input state, one can see that this inequality without expected value is not true, cannot be shown in general for any noise. We saw that it's true for the polarizing noise, but for any noise, this inequality cannot be shown without expected value. And uh, in particular, uh, more interestingly, this paper, as I said before, quantum refrigerator showed uh, how to average non neutral noise to perform and quantum computation without fresh auxiliary qubits. And uh, however, in certain eigennoise regime, we can obtain uh, this uh, inequality uh, that for that larger than log n and uh, of these under some certain parameters of the noise map, uh, single qubit noise map, we have uh, this inequality without expected value. Okay. And um, okay, so what we've discussed so far give us a, a classical simulation algorithm for simulating noisy random circuits with general noise. And um, so the task is estimating this uh, all expectation value with type probability over the choice of pi with some accuracy, with some uh, um, wanted accuracy. And uh, we have seen before that uh, if uh, we take just the last k layers of the circuit with type probability over the choice of the circuit, we have the error of approximation that is exponential in these uh, uh, last k layers considered. So if we want this quantity uh, uh, less than epsilon, we, it suffice to choose uh, k equal log epsilon minus one. And uh, so the time complexity of uh, this is just uh, outing uh, this quantity. And uh, this can be done uh, like uh, by working in the Eisenberg picture and through standard Letcon arguments. If p is a local Pauli, and uh, phi is uh, these uh, is layers of quantum circuit, uh, then this is also, this observable is local. So uh, okay, a light con argument can be taught, uh, for example, with these kind of schemes. And um, yeah, so um, if we have a K-depth circuit of local Pauli, the number of effective qubits in the light con is order K. And uh, the cost of a quantum uh, computation of K qubit is exponential in K. In at least uh, this figure is 1D. So uh, the computational time for 1D is exponential in the order K. And uh, K is log epsilon minus 1. So we have a poly epsilon minus 1 uh, to simulate this power expectation value with high probability over the choice of the circuit. And um, in general, we have this theorem that holds for any dimension. But given a randomly sampled noisy quantum circuit for any depth and noise, there is a classical algorithm to estimate the local public expectation value to epsilon at the precision type probability over the choice of the circuit. And the runtime is this exponential in the number of effective qubits in the light cone. That depends by dimension, constant, uh, spatial dimensionality of your circuit. For, and, and this is uh, for general D dimension. And uh, this for D equal one is poly epsilon minus one, but for D uh, larger than uh, uh, one is quasi poly in epsilon. And we don't have any dependence by the number of qubits and depth. So for constant epsilon precision, the algorithm is efficient for any dimensionality. And uh, for epsilon inverse polynomially, the algorithm is, is efficient only for 1D with this algorithm and quasi poly for a larger dimension. And uh, for constant precision, the algorithm is efficient also in uh, possibly all to all connectivity. Wait, wait. Okay. And um, one can ask uh, about global public expectation value for this task, uh, this uh, case, uh, the, the problem is trivial because uh, we can show that public expectation value are suppressed with the Pauli weight. So for simulating public expectation value of global power, it's price to output zero and succeed with high probability. And uh, we also give uh, a condition to verify the success of the classical simulation that is basically check if the Heisenberg evolved observable is close enough to the, to the identity, to something proportional to the identity. If it's true, then you know that uh, you picked a circuit where this classical simulation works. Okay, let's move to Barren Plateau. And um, yeah, Barren Plateau is a phenomenon that uh, um, like, uh, was um, 
uh, uh, born in the context of variational quantum algorithms, and uh, where the problem is encoded uh, in to find the minimum of a cost function that depends by some parameter, where that are the parameters of the gates. And uh, the definition of Barrett plateau is um, informally. For most choices of this uh, U1, uh, UM, the cost landscape is uh, essentially flat. And uh, also the gradient norm is very small. And um, cost functions uh, are usually made by public expectation values. And um, one can ask, do variation in the gate mu influence C? It is captured from the partial derivative. If uh, the partial derivative is, is zero, this means that uh, the cost function does not depend by this parameter. And um, yeah, and uh, if the partial variance of the partial derivative is exponentially small by Chebyshev inequality, this implies that uh, the influence is very unlikely. And uh, in quantum machine learning jargon, this means also that the gate is not trainable. And uh, his works have shown that in the noiseless case, uh, at depth larger than omega n, we have uh, exponential concentration of cost function and the partial derivative exponential is small. And this essentially, the intuition behind this is that the circuit, uh, where we assume that these gates are random, uh, converge to a, uh, approximately to the sign. And these are second moment quantities. And um, in the depolarizing noise regime, it was shown the same of uh, this noiseless case. And this is uh, the intuition behind this is, is uh, the fast convergence the to the maximum state discussed at the beginning. And uh, for non neutral no work, uh, non neutral noise, uh, our work kicks in, and, uh, sh and we show that uh, we don't have variant plateau at the end depth for local cost function. In particular, the variance of the cost function is omega 1, and the variance of the partial derivative decays exponentially with uh, 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 from the last layer. And um, so we show that all the last log n layers are trainable, the gates here. And um, please compare our work with uh, this uh, other nice work that came out uh, a bit before us by Singh Kanipa and uh, Daniel Idar, where it was analyzed uh, barrier plateau phenomena beyond unital noise. And uh, okay, in more technical terms, here we find uh, the formula for the variance of the cost function with respect to uh, here, uh, it's a uh, genetic observable. Uh, and we show that uh, it's uh, each Pauli weight, each Pauli component is, is suppressed with the Pauli weight. And this implies that local cost function, like uh, Z1 expectation value, do not suffer from exponential concentration. And the global cost function suffer from exponential concentration, like Z tensor n. And for the partial derivative, we show that for any noise, uh, the, we show this upper bound for the partial derivative that is suppressed both with the uh, depth from the end and also with Pauli weight. And we show for local cost function a matching lower bound, which shows that these log, uh, last layers are actually trainable. And these are corollary of this is that the, the gradient norm is uh, omega one in average. So. Uh, we show absence of barren plateau. And uh, if T is global, then for any gate, we have still, uh, um, that any gate is not trainable. And uh, for the particular case of unital noise, our results imply uh, is that uh, in each gate, each partial derivative with respect to any gate in the circuit is suppressed uh, exponentially in the depth of the circuit. And this uh, um, generalized previous works because uh, assume general unital noise without any additional assumption, assumption like works, for example, for the facing noise. And uh, okay, proof ingredients are working the assembly picture to design properties and using a normal form of noise channels, which is useful when you have some kind of unitary invariance, you have some kind of sparsity in the power transfer matrix. And uh, our numerical experiments confirms our result for more structured circuits. One can wonder if the true design of the true design assumption of the two qubit gates is necessary. Uh, our numerical example, uh, numerical example says uh, probably not. And uh, okay. And conclusion is that uh, any amount of non neutral noise induces lack of barren plateau, but it truncates most circuits to effectively logarithmic depth, allowing efficient classical simulation in estimating Pauli expectation values. And uh, also, we have seen that um, 
uh, the polarizing noisy circuits are restricted to log depth. But also we mentioned that uh, if one carefully engineered the circuits to take advantage of non-neutral noise, one can perform quantum computation more than log depth. However, our work says that uh, most circuits behave like log depth circuits, effectively log depth circuits. So we can say that uh, unless we carefully engineer the circuits to take advantage of the noise, it's unlikely that the non neutral noisy circuits are preferable over the polarizing noisy circuits. And uh, assuming over simplicity model would be misleading because we will show that the uh, absence of barren plateau with non neutral noise, but this absence of barren plateau is not a useful absence of barren plateau because of the effective shallowness. And the, the open question is the simulating public expectation value on noisy random circuits with inverse polynomial accuracy in, in 2D and all, all connected in polynomial time. Our algorithm is efficient in 1D. And um, we have some work in progress where we improve a bit uh, this, but uh, yeah, it's uh, mostly open in all to all connectivity for general noise model. And um, the complexity of classical simulation of random circuit sampling with non neutral noise is still open as uh, pointed out uh, in this work uh, that I've all, effect of non neutral noise or random circuit sampling. And um, the depolarizing case was addressed in this uh, Aranov et al. talk at QAP. And uh, yeah, with this, I conclude. Thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes, thanks for, for the talk. Um, my question was, you were saying that if you have depolarizing noise and your circuit is too long, then you have just pure noise at the end and um, yeah, it's a useless circuit. And that if you have non unital noise, then you have the, the log, the last log depth um, that can be used to do some computation. Can you have that if your circuit is too short, then your non unital noise is basically equivalent to depolarizing noise, and that you need to make your circuit longer to be able to make use of the last log n? Uh, okay, it uh, was shown uh, that uh, basically the polarizing noise circuits are useless if you have uh, a circuit larger than log n, log n. So you are restricted to quantum circuits that are less than log n if you want to do something useful. We also show that if you have a circuit larger than log n with any noise, only the last log n layers matter on average. While it was also known that uh, if for worst case circuits, this is not true. So, I mean, um, one one way of reading this result is the, this, that, uh, I mean, unless we carefully engineer the circuits to take advantage of the noise, it's unlikely that non neutral noisy circuits are preferable over depolarizing noisy circuits, which are restricted to like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you don't do anything clever, probably you are uh, restricted to log depth both ways. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so there was a paper from 2020, I think, where there was shown that any noisy quantum circuit can be effectively simulated with tensor networks, where I think the noise model they used was just like, if the gates are low fidelity, then you can like do it as accurately with tensor networks. How does that relate to, to this work? Is that is that kind of noise, does that belong to any of your noise models here? Okay, I'm um, honestly I don't know the paper that you are talking about, but uh, okay, as far as uh, I know, I, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, this works uh, analyze uh, uh, some kind of there were previous work that analyze uh, our noise or different kind of noise. Here we are. Uh, we don't have any assumption, for example, on this uh, effective shallowness. We don't have any assumption on the noise apart from being. Uh, non-unitary, that is not a unitary map, and uh, that is local. Uh, uh, as far as I know, previous work assumed assumption on the noise. Any other questions? There is one in the back. Yeah. 
Um, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I wanted to ask, so if I'm not mistaken, the paper that you mentioned on quantum refrigerator, it somehow exploits the knowledge of the um, of the fixed point of the um, non-unital noise. In your analysis, do you um, do you use the knowledge of the noise map um, at any at any point, point, or you only rely on the fact that it's uh, non-unital? Okay, one second. Okay, this theorem here holds um, for any noise that is non-unitary, that is not a unitary channel, um, and uh, holds for any noise that has uh, parameters that are constant in the number of qubits. Like which is which we expect if we take the model of noise that is local, and uh, yeah. So for this theorem, you don't. I mean, uh, holds for any noise. However, for the classical simulation, yeah, you need to know the noise. I mean, we assume that we have a quantum circuit written on our computer or our paper piece of paper, uh, where we know the details of the noise parameter. Yeah, we want to efficient to want to classically simulate this circuit that uh, we have. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, thank Antonio again.